Hello, my name is Dean Frias, and this is my signature assignment, my philosophy of education, uh, which is our module seven assignment. So to start us off, uh, we're going to just kind of briefly uh, view our uh, the, the seven key points that we're going to be discussing in this presentation, the purpose of education as in our society, the role uh, of an educator experiences as a student and uh, the future impact that will have uh, on me as an educator. Three qualities of an effective educator, wanting to be an educator, uh, education in 50 years, and working on um, my current education philosophy. So to start us off, we're going to look at the purpose of education in our society, the question being, uh, what do you see as the purpose of education in our society? Overall, education is uh, is to better society through empowering its citizens uh, with knowledge of systems, information, and exposure to various methodologies of practice, life applications. Um, essentially, this is a fancy way of saying that school helps better our society by helping people learn skills that will then later be applied uh, in the larger society or in particular fields. Uh, in, this, in the video that was introduced in module one, uh, the school of life, uh, what's education for, we explore concepts that education is more than just tests. It helps people uh, understand relationships, career avenues, and developing skills. This concept is more than just K through 12, it's lifelong learning. And as an informal educator, uh, that really resonates with me. So what is the role of an educator? In chapter four, uh, we read this, this entry uh, in, in our assigned text, uh, making the most of the Mosaic classroom. We learn that many successful teachers focus more on the understanding of individual qualities of students rather than relying on stereotypes uh, and strict lesson plans. Um, this provides opportunities for students to trust in the educator and um, actually allow them to be interested and successful in learning the content that the educator is trying to teach. In short, basically in the classroom, the role of the educator is to understand individual qualities of students and provide an environment that creates opportunities for students to trust, be interested in the content, and critically think about content. Outside of the classroom, though, I believe that the um, educator, the role of the educator is to apply this approach of understanding the individuality of others and promote individual and promote opportunities um, of communality to achieve common goals, basically taking these same skill sets that are applied in the classroom, um, but uh, applying them to the larger society to kind of help everybody establish, you know, goals and get on the same page. Uh, for the question, how have your experiences as a student impacted uh, might impact me as a future um, educational um, professional. Uh, I currently hold a unique position of being both a professional educator and a student at the same time. As of right now, I've chosen to work in the field of informal STEM education. So that means uh, teaching people of all different ages, backgrounds, socioeconomic statuses about STEM in comfortable, relaxed settings, kind of like museums, science centers, um, or libraries, community centers, those types of places. Um, being a student in this course has taught me some valuable skills to apply to my practice. Uh, some of these skills uh, would include value, the process of encouraging your students to to, to think critically um, about, about uh, topics. Um, so valuing the process of critical thinking, encourage transdisciplinary views of education. So looking at different fields and applying them um, through different lenses. Um, including uh, many different voices at the table. So including people to want to learn no matter their age, their gender, socioeconomic status, sexual identity, physical, cognitive disabilities, or race. Everybody is welcomed at the table to want to explore learning. Um, and finally, um, viewing teachers as transformative intellectuals uh, in chapter 16, we read uh, in, this, in the section, teachers as transformative intellectuals, that 
there are many reasons why teachers should be viewed as these transformative uh, individuals that that are dedicated purely to the values of intellect and just thinking and 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 getting people to think outside of the box. Um, kind of challenging that that current mindset that teaching is primarily just supposed to be uh, judging like um, what do grades say about a student and instead getting teachers to really value um, looking at ways to apply um, again critical thinking methods um, on a bigger on a bigger whole of things. So what are three qualities of an effective educator? Uh, three qualities that I believe, best help answer this question would be from chapter seven, uh, which was on stir and serve recipes for teaching. Uh, number one would be self-initiated learning. Number two would be flexibility and adaptability. And number three would be intellectual engagement and uh, purpose. So what are all these? Self-initiated learning is the ability to, uh, to, to motivate yourself and uh, engage in continuous learning, both in a professional setting, but also personally. Teachers who actively seek out new ideas, methods, and resources, um, they continue to kind of hone in their craft and really, really improve um, the ways that they teach or reach audiences. Uh, in, in tangent to that, flexibility and adaptability is a willingness to be flexible and adaptable in the classroom very much recognizing that each student is unique and may require a different approach to learning. Uh, the chapter really emphasizes the importance of teachers modifying their teaching methods based on needs of the student and involving dynamics um, of the classroom or just society as a whole. Intellectual engagement and purpose uh, this is saying a sense of purpose in teaching um, beyond practical aspects, focusing on the intellectual engagement and the practicality of that subject matter. So basically saying that uh, you have to you have to be not essentially passionate, but you have to understand why are certain topics that you're teaching important and that will kind of deliver through your education um, or, or instruction of that subject matter. I feel as though I have most of these qualities and I'm constantly working on improving them, um, learning of new ways on how to hone in these crafts to make me a more effective educator. Um, for example, self-initiated learning and flexibility and adaptability that will always be present, I believe, um, for any educator throughout their whole career. A, a really good example would be current world events, uh, specifically looking at the Palestine-Israel conflict and understanding that there are many layers and many different viewpoints of of this historical context and also understanding that that these are also individuals identities not just on a nationality level but also on a religious level on a level that that people empathize and 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 see these different viewpoints and have um have feelings that could isolate them um so being understanding, teaching yourself more about this, about these topics, about world events, and adapting your teaching style to, to, to help better implement and be more inclusive of people helps not alienate individuals and helps show that that you're dedicated to to your craft of being an educator um, and and you know better better including of all students. The next question is, what is your purpose in wanting to be an educator? Personally, I uh, would I want to help individuals discover um, uh, learning as an informal educator. I'm really drawn to the to the ability of reaching individuals who don't believe that learning still applies to them. Maybe they think that they've aged out, that it's just a K through 12 thing. Um, but in reality, that learning is a lifelong um, process that we're always uh, learning no matter our age. Uh, and uh, inviting uh, an inclusive field uh, for people to come learn um, and learn intergenerationally. Again, uh, learn uh, from these interdisciplinary topics and apply them uh, through different lenses. Uh, in those are my main reasons of why I'm really interested in being an informal um, educator. Uh, in chapter eight, uh, we discuss, the reading basically discusses how currently 
teachers and students and the education system is burdened and overwhelmed uh, with tasks, uh, basically demanding them to to achieve certain grades or or achieve certain scores through standardized testing instead of fostering student success through critical thinking and power empowerment and connecting them to to resources uh, in general um so that is what's kind of like drawing me or kind of pushing me more towards the field of wanting to be an informal educator rather than um, teaching in a in your typical K through 12 um, classroom. So based on my research in this class, how uh, would I change uh, schools or the field of education so students can meet the challenges of the next 50 years? I think number one would be empowering learners to think critically, apply different societal lenses and developing um, learning skills instead of placing so much emphasis of K through 12 learning on uh, uh, quantitative results such as um, uh, standardized testing scores, maybe looking at at more qualitative um, instruction. How do we get students to think critically about, about uh, the topics that we're teaching and apply different lenses to them? Um, as we learned in modules two and three, the field of education has constantly been changing in this country on a legisl legislative level, whether it's No Child Left Behind, whether it is um, Brown v. Board of Education. Um, we've read that, that our education field is constantly changing. Um, and that requires both push internally um, from educators, but also from society as a whole. Um, the other thing is ensuring that teachers um, are constantly adaptable and open to, to being uh, inquisitive and taking self-initiative to, to bettering themselves or continuing their own personal education. Finally, uh, taking a look at uh, my own personal working education philosophy. As an informal STEM educator, my philosophy is rooted in the belief that education should be accessible and enjoyable and inclusive for individuals across all diverse uh, socioeconomic backgrounds, races, sexual orientations, gender identities, and ages. I'm really committed to fostering a learning environment that sparks curiosity and diversity um, and empowers learners to explore wonders uh, of STEM technology of STEM, which is science, technology, engineering, and math. Uh, in brief, uh, if I were to summarize it down to one paragraph, I'd say my philosophy of education as an informal STEM educator is founded on inclusivity, accessibility, experiential learning, so uh, learning through your experiences, through your senses, lifelong curiosity, community engagement, and ethical responsibility. Through these principles, I aspire to create an educational experience that transcends boundaries, fosters a love for learning, and equips individuals uh, to navigate the complexities of not just STEM landscapes, but all educational landscapes with confidence and compassion. Uh, here are my references, um, and I thank you so much, and thank you for a great semester. Bye-bye.